Halloween is a 1978 American slasher film directed and written by John Carpenter, co-written by Deborah Hill, and it stars Donald Pleasance and Jamie Lee Curtis in her film debut. It isn't just a slasher movie, though. It's my favorite movie. I'm going to outline a few reasons why I think it's worth sitting through the 91-minute runtime. I know what you're thinking. A horror slasher? The acting must be kind of corny. And don't get me wrong, it is, at points. However, there are a few standout performances that make it worth it. The first of those is Donald Pleasance. Donald Pleasance was paid $20,000 for five days of filming. Production only took 20 days. $20,000 is a pretty substantial amount of the total budget of the film, which was $300,000. The role he plays of Dr. Loomis was originally intended for Peter Cushing, who played Grand Moff Tarkin in Star Wars the year before. Christopher Lee was also approached for the role, and he turned it down. And he's been quoted later as saying that declining this role was the biggest mistake he made during his career. The producer of Halloween suggested Pleasance, who agreed to star because his daughter Lucy, who was a guitarist, had enjoyed Carpenter's score for his 1976 film, Assault on Precinct 13. Dr. Samuel Loomis is the seminal Ahab. It's a term the horror community has borrowed from Herman Melville, the writer of Moby Dick. Ahab was a character in that book who goes up against the white whale, the titular white whale, Moby Dick. He's an individual who has an intimate yet adversarial relationship, and in the case of horror movies, that's with a known serial killer instead of a giant whale. Loomis saw Michael grow up from childhood. He's been his doctor for a long time, so he knows him better than anyone. And he has my favorite scene in this film, which is his description of Michael as just pure evil. This was Jamie Lee Curtis's first movie, and she really knocked it out of the park. She's sort of the seminal screen queen or final girl, which is basically a beautiful young actress who is at the mercy of the killers in horror movies. She's beautiful, yet pretty attainable to the average Joe Smo like me. Finally, rounding out the main cast, we have Nick Castle as Michael Myers, or as he's credited in the credits to the film, The Shape. And several people actually do play Michael Myers in this film. Nick Castle isn't the one you see when his mask gets removed. And you don't see him earlier in the film when Michael's a child. But there's not a whole lot I can say about this role. Michael doesn't speak. He just sort of stands there creepily or attacks sometimes. But as far as that goes, Nick Castle does a great job at that. There's some occasional scenes where you see him staring at the at Jamie Lee Curtis's character from behind a bush. And I gotta say, he's, he's good at standing there and being creepy. The music for this film is unforgettable. The theme is fantastic. It's probably my favorite theme in horror movies as a whole, though there are some other ones that come close. Every piece of music in this film fits the scene perfectly, and... I think part of that has to do with the fact that John Carpenter, the writer and director of the film, composed all the music, so he knew what he wanted, and it fits so well in every single scene. Importance means different things to different people. I've already mentioned my bias and that this is my favorite movie of all time. Somebody more business-minded might look at the movie and consider how it spawned multiple sequels, remakes... Some people more artistically minded might look at the aesthetic choices. I've mentioned the music. Some of the camera work is amazing. The final shot of this film, which I really don't want to say in this video, is fantastic. The film is important enough that it was selected for preservation in the United States National Film Registry by the Library of Congress for being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. And for me, I think it fits all three of those categories. But Halloween also adds more conventions and stuff that are constantly getting replicated as people try and create more films in this genre. I think the important thing to do is just sit down. If you've got 91 minutes, pop this film in. And maybe you're not like me. Maybe it won't be your favorite when you finish it. But I think you'll at least walk away saying, okay, that wasn't a complete waste of 91 minutes. I at least have a catchy song stuck in my head.